Hey guys, welcome to Switch Tech Solutions. Today, we are going to be looking at four different connectivity options for both switches and routers and testing them out in Packet Tracer. This tutorial is going to include accessing devices via the device CLI, using a console connection, Telnet, and finally, SSH. So let's get right into it. First, we are going to access the devices using the CLI tab. Click on the router and maximize the menu. If we look up at the top toolbar, we have four options, physical, config, CLI, and attribute. Click on the CLI tab, and now we have full access to the entire CLI of the router. We can enable to go to privileged exec mode, and we can enter the global configuration mode. This is the simplest and easiest way to access the CLI in Packet Tracer. However, it doesn't always apply to real life. In the next steps, we are going to access the router exactly like we could in real life. Next, we are going to use a console connection to connect from the PC on the right to the router on the left. Go down to the bottom left toolbar and click on the connections option and use the blue console cable. Click on it. Click on the PC and make sure to choose the RS-232 port as this is a serial connection, so it won't work with any other port. Click on the router and click the console option. We can now access this by clicking on the PC, going to the desktop option on the top toolbar, and use the terminal tool. Click OK to configure the port, and we have now connected to the router. We can enable into privileged exec mode, and we can enter the global configuration options. You have full configuration from this mode, and you can close it whenever you like. The next thing we are going to do is configure the Telnet protocol, and it's going to allow us to connect from the PC all the way to the router using the IP network. But first, we actually have to configure both this IP on the router and this IP for the PC to make sure we have a full network. So first, let's go to the router and assign it an IP address. So click on the router and click on the CLI taskbar. Enter the global configuration mode and navigate to the interface that you have connected. We will now apply the IP address we had set out in our workspace namely the 192.168.0.1 with a slash 24 subnet mask. Finally, make sure to type no shutdown to turn on that interface. The interface has now turned on. Exit out of this. Close the window and make sure the port has been turned on. And it has. So now let's configure the PC. Click on the PC and navigate to the Desktop tab. Click on the IP configuration icon, and Lena can now assign it a static IP address. In this instance, it is going to be the 192.168.0.2 that we set out in our workspace. Make sure it has a subnet mask and a default gateway, and we are ready to go. Exit out of that, and we have full green connections on both our devices. But before we start Telnet, let's make sure our connection is good. Go into our PC, go to the Desktop tab, and click on the Command Prompt icon. Now attempt to ping the default gateway or the IP of the router port, namely the 192.168.0.1 IP. If the pings come back positive, we have full connection and we can go ahead with our Telnet configuration. Let's get started with our configuration. Click on the router and navigate to the CLI tab. Once you are in the global configuration mode, we will begin configuration. First, we will assign a host name to the router. Next, we will give it a username and password. You can make this whatever you like. This will be used when logging in with the Telnet client. 
Next, enable secret to allow a password between the user exec mode and the privileged exec mode. And then navigate to the virtual lines or the line VTY zero to four. Next, we need to choose what input or what protocol we want to use. So use the transport input telnet command to choose telnet. And finally, use the login local command to force the user to use the username and password to log in when accessing the router with telnet. Finally, exit out of the virtual lines and close out of the CLI. We can now go to the PC, navigate to the desktop, and go to the Telnet or SSH client. Choose the Telnet connection type and input the IP address of the router. Click Connect, and we are given the prompt for the username. Input the admin username and use Cisco for the password. We now have user exec mode. Enable to go to the privileged exec mode and we are given the secret password. Insert that secret password to access the next mode. And we see we have full connection to our router using Telnet. Next, we are going to connect using SSH from the PC to the router. We have already set up our network connectivity from our Telnet example, so we are going to skip that. So let's get right into the SSH configuration. Click on the router and access the CLI and navigate to the global configuration mode. The setup is extremely similar to Telnet, but there's going to be a couple new commands to learn. So first we will create the similar host name and we need to have a username and password just like our Telnet example. Next, we're going to create our secret password for our password for our privileged exec mode. Next, we will give the router an IP domain name. You can choose whatever you like and sync it with your organization. Finally, we have to create the cryptographic keys that are going to be used for our SSH communication. It is a much more secure communication protocol than Telnet, and it is extremely recommended to use it. Next, we will, we will go to the virtual terminal or the virtual VTY lines. And we need to enable SSH using the transport input SSH command. And finally, just like Telnet, we will use the login local to force the user to log in using the username and password we set aside. Exit out of the virtual lines and close the prompt. Go to the PC, navigate to the desktop, and click on the Telnet slash SSH client. Choose the SSH connection type, insert the host name or IP address of the device, and insert the username. Click connect, and we are given the password prompt. This is the username and password that you set aside first. You can now enable, do the secret password, and you now have full access to the privileged exec mode of the router with all of the commands available. Thank you guys so much for watching. That concludes this tutorial for Cisco Packet Tracer. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe and hit the like button, and we will see you in my next video.